It had worked, Wayne's tormentor thought. Such a simple idea, really. A flip of the switch turned off the series of high-intensity heat lamps that had killed Wayne. It was regrettable that an immense magnifying glass was not to be had. It had been necessary to simulate the effect, but the result was the same. It had taken a while to design a power source and a battery of heat lamps powerful enough to do the job. If Wayne had chosen the other door, a flamethrower awaited him to simulate the fire-breathing dragon. Either way, it was unlikely the prisoner would escape. That was the whole point, really, in building a better mousetrap. Nobody actually wanted the mouse to escape the trap. But the next time, he would have to build a more complicated mousetrap. This project had concluded all too soon. There had only been time for the police to receive two messages, and it had been unexpectedly entertaining to taunt them. Yes, next time would be far more involved. Perhaps there would be a way for the victim to watch the trap being sprung? Already, a design for the trap was forming in the mind of Wayne's captor. Well, it was time to type the final message. He should let the police know that they needn't waste time searching for the first mouse to die in one of his traps. Present Day When did you find his body? We didn't. That's part of the problem. This is all conjecture. When we got one of these messages, we focused on anybody that had been reported missing, but we don't have any confirmation of the victims, if this is real. Meacham was living just over the border in Ohio, but nobody in a five-county area had gone missing without being located. So we looked farther afield and found Meacham. We put out a bolo, but he was never found. And you think this guy, this mousetrap killer, is real, Jenny said. It wasn't a question. I do. My gut says he snatched these people and put them in a custom-designed prison. We think he gets his jollies taunting the police and watching his victims squirm. She paused. We don't have any idea what he does to them, only what he says he does. If he's really doing what he says, it wouldn't be easy to build these booby-trapped rooms and keep them hidden, said Marcus. The chief shrugged. We enlisted the sheriff to search any old barns, farmhouses, storage buildings, anything like that in the county. My department did the same in town. Any unused warehouses, factories, old storage facilities, anything. We looked hard for a few weeks, even after we got the last message, but once he told us the victims were dead, we eventually had to move on to other cases. We don't have the resources to pursue cold cases forever. Beside the photo of Wayne Meacham, a photograph of a single 8.5 by 11 inch piece of paper appeared. The photo was clear enough to show creases where the paper had been folded and stuffed into the envelope addressed to the former police chief. On the paper was typed, Chief, one of your citizens has been placed in a chamber a booby-trapped chamber. They have been given a riddle to solve. If they solve it correctly, the solution will provide a clue to escaping the chamber. They have five days. If they do not solve the riddle, or if you do not rescue them in that time, the trap will be sprung. Better hurry, Chief. Hickory dickory dock. Chief Satterfield clicked the mouse, and a second note appeared beside the first one. Chief, day two, your citizen is having trouble with the riddle. Hickory dickory dock. Without speaking, the chief clicked the mouse again. Chief, day three, too late, the mouse sprung the trap. Hickory dickory dock. The room was silent, save for the hum of the overhead fluorescent lights.